Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. In this episode, I will be covering about quality of service technology or QoS with TP-Link Omada. I've had inquiries about it in the past and I have not seen any channel cover this topic so I hope you will find this interesting. Also in some of my videos and forum posts, I was asked what document I used whenever I make this type of contents and the answer is I usually refer to the publicly available online documentation. And while that is true, I just want to add that I also rely on my residual knowledge. And then I just look for that option or feature in Umada and then test it out. Anyway, so about QoS, I just want to mention the common tools and technologies available. They are classification, queuing, posing, and then shaping. So if you would like to know more details about those, I will share links to the documentation in the description. So let me just show you those documentation. For example, this is the Cisco QoS Handbook, 2nd edition. You can find QoS here. And then you can read more about classification and queuing in here. And then policing and shaping. Another document that I usually use whenever I'm doing contents is I refer to the product information. I'm using SGT428. So I will see that in QoS, it supports eight priority queues. It supports the industry standard 802.13 for classification of services and differential services. So you can see more about here. And another example, if I would like to know more about freelance, so I will be able to learn more about it here. Does it even support layer three? Of course, it supports layer three switching. So you can see here. And another QoS information about command line interfaces. And then sometimes I do use other documentations not related to that particular switch model, but it really helps me learn more about TP-Link and their technologies. Like for example, in here, the class of service, the priority mode, scheduler mode, and this very important thing, bandwidth control. For classification and queuing, I have only seen this done on enterprise level back in the days. And even back then, I'm not a fan of this approach due to the perhaps requirement of doing QoS this way. With Omada platform, it is much more manageable, but I will still not recommend this approach for home use. So as for pulsing and shaping, Omada platform offers a lot of options and functionalities and they appear many times across the whole platform. This is also the simplest and in my opinion, the technology that will have a huge impact for home use. It is very useful to implement for home use because many users are working from home and the network is being shared with other traffic such as streaming and gaming. So in this video, I will focus mostly on policing and shaping. But if you really want to do network analysis and wants to classify your traffic, then you can run Gateway QoS. I will just quickly show how Gateway QoS looks so to give you an idea. For Gateway QoS, you go to Transmission and then go to Gateway QoS. And I already pre-created some of the items here, but this is not enabled. So let me just open this one. This is not enabled. I'm just showing this how it looks like for classification and queuing and how 802.1p can be configured for tp link Omada. So you can see here, the direction is either in or out or both. And you have to enter your internet bandwidth. Since, since this is one, this is about internet traffic. So you need to enter your bandwidth in kbps and then you have to specify how much bandwidth can be allotted for each class so you can allot 25 for all or in this example i allotted 40 percent for class one 30 percent for class two 20 percent for class three and then for the others it's 10 percent and this class rule can be defined by going here so you can see i have pre-created classes as well you have to identify the source and then destination and then the service so you can see here these are all built-in services but for this class 3 I have created a custom service this is when I decided to do some network analysis for my system so what is this service thing where can you find this you go to profiles and then gateway QS service and you can see all the gateway QoS settings in here. You can see FTP, SSH, Telnet. And then this is the custom one that I created. Let me just go here. And this is based on my network analysis. Again, you have to do network analysis for your network to fully identify this type of traffic. And if I have to go back there, 
you can see this all FTP, those are all defined in the profile section for Gateway QoS. If you have voice over IP, you can prioritize that by turning on this particular service. You need to have a SIP UDP port though here. And then if your traffic is going to another network outside of your gateway, then you would like to make sure that QoS is also applied. Remember, this is a per hub technology. You can tag them so that the rule can be applied for your data. And so that's a quick and dirty way of going through the classification and queuing. As for policing and shaping, like I said, there are many ways that UMAD uh, provides for the users in this particular platform. So let me just show you some. I will not cover all, but where you can see this option. So for example, under LAN, you can go to profile and I created a particular profile here that says 10 for limit. And you can see here the bar it's bandwidth control is called rate limit. And you can see here under advanced option, that I have limited this with the ingress of 4 Mbps and egress of 10 Mbps. So you can change Kbps or Mbps here in this particular setting, which is good. Another way to set it up is through the wireless. So you can go here to the wireless networks and let me go click this one, edit this one, advanced settings. And you can see here client rate limit. This is a per client. So if you have multiple clients, you can define a per client limit and you can do a custom and do something like this. You can define those limit or you can create profiles in here and you can do this. And you can apply this particular profile to per client and the same thing can be done for the whole ssid same thing can be done for the whole or you can mix and match and combine whatever needs to be done so, you can see you can mix and match another area where you can do policing and shaping in omada's platform is through the captive portal with captive profile you can create vouchers where you can set certain speed and certain bandwidth going back to the home use case scenario for this particular video i will be focusing mostly on the bandwidth control so bandwidth control i believe is the most applicable qos feature that you can use for home so whether you prioritize the traffic for your meetings or gamings and streaming so it doesn't really matter which type of traffic you would like to control what this does is that to make sure or to ensure that if a certain threshold is met then throttling will happen based on the rule that you will create so in this particular screen you can see i have two bandwidth control rule lists already throttle 10 to throttle to 10 mbps and the other one is throttle 20 to throttle to 20 mbps this only applies whenever the bandwidth reaches a certain threshold so currently there is no bandwidth control in effect and i'll just show you how my network performs so this is my current internet speed my pc is really slow so it can only do 200 and 300 but you can see it's more than 100 mbps Okay, so let me just do a test again. Okay, so this will be our baseline. I have 100 and 200. Turn this on. I'm going to enable the threshold. And currently I have 1000 Mbps here. So let's say, let's say this is 100 and this is 100. And I'll just do that, 100 Mbps, 100 Mbps and so in order for me to demonstrate this and to reach the threshold i will set the threshold to 20 mbps i will click apply in here. okay so it's saying that hey once you hit this threshold apply these rules currently i don't have any rules that are active so let's see how it performs let's do that So almost no effect at all because I don't have any rules applied whenever a threshold is being hit. So let's apply our threshold now. Let me turn on these rules and let me check my current network where I'm currently at. I'm currently at VLAN 20. So once 
the threshold is met 20% of the bandwidth is being used out of the 100 which we will hit because I'm doing more than 100 Mbps every time I'm doing tests then this throttle 20 will kick in and put me down to 20 Mbps there is a two minute waiting period before everything settles back down again and remove this particular rule and you will have a full bandwidth again back to your whole network okay so let's do that again let's do this test so it looks like since I already have met the bandwidth the 20 Mbps is still in effect and as you can see I cannot go past 20 Mbps for downloading it only applies to the network that I'm connected at, at VLAN 20 meaning all the rest of the other machines that are connected to the network that are doing streaming and everything since I'm only getting 20 Mbps, the rest of the bandwidth will be allocated to that particular network, making sure that whichever network you are prioritizing will have 80% of the bandwidth. Okay, so let me show my screen here so that you can see where I change my port. Let me go back here. So currently I have two rules in here, one for VLAN 10, one for VLAN 20. And I'm going to go to the admin VLAN here see here ports so I'm currently connected to port 5 which is in the VLAN 20 and port 4 will be in the VLAN 10 so let me go to admin VLAN okay so this is the admin VLAN this is port 6 okay. so if you're looking at the small screen okay so this is my PC I'm going to remove it there we go and I'm going to plug it to port 6. Go. I got IP. And I should be in the admin VLAN 101. As you can see, I'm in VLAN 101. So I should go back to my normal speed here. So test again. I'm not being affected by any of the rules that I set up for throttling. So let me go back to this screen here. And I have VLAN 10 here in port 4. Transfer my PC there. So here, I have our bringing in. So this one is in port 4. One, two, three. So let's check the IP. I'm in VLAN 10 now. Okay. So if I go back to my bandwidth, so throttle 10 will be applicable for us once this rule kicks in. Okay, so let's check it out. So as you can see, since now I'm on VLAN 10 and the role is currently active, I'm only getting 10 Mbps on this particular port. Okay. So is it ever going to settle back? So let's do a, a timer in here. So I'm setting up a timer. Okay, so let's see if the rule has already refreshed back to no congestion. So let's try it again. And as you can see, I can get more than 10 Mbps again on the same port. But you might notice here later on that the speed might back down again as soon as that threshold is hit again. So as you can see here, the rule has been applied already during the span of the upload. So now you can see here that the upload is being affected. So if we do another test, in here the rule will already be active and you will see that nmbps will again be active for this particular port and for this particular network so 
if I go back here and let me just show you how to create this type of rule so that you will have an idea how to create this so you have seen me how to turn on the bandwidth control and the threshold control and set up the upstream and downstream bandwidth stream to create the rule just create new rule in here and let's say 50 mbps and let's say IP group and in here you can select IP group any then you can select all your networks in here and uh, you can say 50 mbps you can say 50 mbps for home use I use shared for aggregated by the default users the eight and uh, let me turn off again this rule so that I only have 50 MP. What I'm saying here is once I reach 20% of the threshold, I should only get 50 Mbps bandwidth regardless of my network. So I'm currently in VLAN, VLAN 10. So let me go back to admin VLAN here. Port 6 is admin VLAN. So I'm in the admin VLAN and there's no specific admin VLAN definition here but I have IP group any meaning it will include all the VLANs, all the networks because it's IP group any. And once I hit the 20% threshold, I should only be getting 50 Mbps for upload and download. So let's do that. Let's try it out. So the first time I do this test, you will see the full speed. Then later on, as the rule gets applied, you will see the bandwidth gets lowered down. So let's do the test again. So this is where you can see that the rule has already applied. We already reached the bandwidth of 20%. We already met that requirement. And if I do a test again, even this download will be affected as well. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I believe this is another first for TP-Link Omada configuration. I haven't seen anything about QoS configurations in any of the YouTube channels, nor any demonstration how this feature works. So if you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps my channel a lot. If you don't like this video, please give it a dislike as well. And do let me know if you can put something on the comment why you don't like this video so I can make those improvements. Again, thank you very much for watching my video. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.